I don't know whether you remember this, but about four going five years ago, you and I had our first interview. At the time, you were in charge of NBK. And my question to you at the time was, aren't you bothered acquiring an entity whose asset quality is so bad, half the book is non-performing? Your response was, that is the exact thesis of our acquisition. We believe we have the balance sheet, the financial muscle to go after that bad book. What changed, Paul? Actually, um, the facts still remain. We went for the book, uh, the bad book. We did actually make significant progress in cleaning up NBK. And uh, I'm, I'm on record saying, you know, the investor didn't, investors didn't approve of us taking NBK. We started turning it around, getting it to profitability. But Julian's, the recent uh, court case um, that hit NBK, uh, which we are still struggling to <laughs> Uh, understand to date, um, took us uh, many steps uh, back. Essentially, it brought out uh, two key, key, key issues, you know, on, on, that, on that momentum. One was it took us to non-compliance on capital, uh, as well as uh, it then challenged how long you will take, because it takes you several steps back, yeah. on how long it will take you to, to be able to um, get value um, back. The group board, as I said in the last uh, session we had with yourself, then made a call to have a deep review on what options are available for us uh, to, to, to deliver on NBK. And broadly, there are you know, three, three kind of uh, actions that you want to, to take. One is you recapitalize. As I said, maybe five billion Kenya shillings to be able to just comply and another maybe three billion to, to, to run the growth. You have the options of evaluating the cell and uh, the typical option that we had was about integration. So coming back to your question was, you're making progress, you get serious headwinds. I think this is like a crash rather than head, headwinds and you make a strategic evaluation. Um, so this is a result of a conscious strategic evaluation. Um, we also think um, <clears throat> on the back of that place, when you make that call, you must make a decision that uh, favors uh, stakeholders. Um, and, and a lot of it was in play for, for stakeholders, largely staff, customers, as well as uh, the shareholder. Mm -hmm. Interesting, Paul, and uh, the follow-up question to that is, uh, I was coming through the numbers last night and something crossed my mind. Had KCB not acquired TMB in DRC, would you have exited NBK? And I ask that because it looks to me like you were in a bind. Do we recapitalize KCB Kenya? Do we recapitalize NBK? And the choice is almost clear there. It, it's one of those uh, strategic consequences in, 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 you know, in decisions, in evaluation. Uh, you, have, you have a machine that fires uh, and fires very strongly in the name of KCB Kenya. Recall, Julian, when we were speaking again last year, uh, the entire acquisition of uh, TMB was funded by KCB Kenya. Right. Um, you, you really have to make sure that that cow is fed well. And uh, therefore, you have to make a choice. Where do you put your money? Uh, and so it was one of those considerations. Again, going back to our first conversation, was the plan always to be a caretaker acquisition while in wait for a strategic investor? And why I ask that is because in our first conversation, we were discussing the, the U-turn in the post-acquisition strategy. Remember, the initial plan was within 24 months, we'll integrate. Then you come and tell me, no, we'll not integrate. Then there was an issue of the back-end integration. Uh, then the case became that we had more value in writing down the contract as opposed to terminating it. It looked to me as though this had always been a potential route for KCB Group. I wouldn't say it was, um, you know, in consideration uh, before uh, September uh, last year. 
is it was it an option always but it wasn't in consideration um, I was a firm believer and uh, so was the board that uh, if we brought the back end uh, together with the deployment of the core banking system and rationalize the network um, that would lift uh, NBK uh, significantly so that 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 was the plan um, that would strip because you, you then remove overlaps of branches you remove uh, overlaps of uh, you know significant functions in the head office uh, other than those that, that are regulatory uh, mandatory by law uh, that that was the plan, but uh, with that, uh, and just to be blunt, with that uh, hit on capital, you then have to ask yourself hard questions. And um, I'm one of those people who say you can have a position today, but as circumstances and, and situation and context changes, uh, you have to make a call. It doesn't mean that you are wrong the other day. It's that how you viewed things and the context changed. And that's just exactly what happened in, in this instance. Um, and, and, and you you said yesterday that uh, the, the multiple is steep. Um, if you cross that the line on that, then hopefully one day if, if that crosses the line, <laughs> uh, you will come and say, Paul, you did a good job yes. <laughs> to deliver that. Uh, but the hard work begins now. It's, it's one thing to, to have an offer on the table, it's another thing to, to, to cross that line. Still on the issue which you have just preempted around the multiple of the, the pricing, our first conversation for when you became uh, the group CEO here was around the valuation of TMB. And I remember telling you, I think this price is steep, and you told me no. But we sat down uh, four months ago and you said um, that uh, the way TMB was paid for is the reason why KCB can is where it is. When you look at the 1.25x on the price to book for, for NBK, when I was doing my math, it looks like you decided we've pumped what into this entity about 13 billion or so. We got it at, uh, at a price to book of 0.9x. We simply want to recover our cost and move on. If you can, it will be a good achievement. Yeah. Right? If you can. Uh, but it's not, it's not a single view, right? Because um, Julian's uh, KCB Kenya is, as I said, is a machine and can perform. Uh, as I said yesterday, I love NBK and I love the brand. Uh, but divided attention, the two units, also comes with a cost. Uh, both, you know, not just financial, but even executive time. So there are other considerations that you put in place. So if, if you cut that, make sure you have no loss for just to you know, borrow from your, your statement and create meaningful focus and value out of KCB Kenya, then it will be a good outcome. Okay. And um, you know, I actually think when I was coming through the numbers looking back, I think KCB Group has done a very good job as far as recoveries are concerned. Granted, it's in loss position, it's undercapitalized, but I wondered to myself, Paul, had you gone through this transaction earlier through carving out some assets and not gobbling up the entire entity, would the outcome have been the same? I remember the end of the day, uh, it, it, you don't own it at that point, and the question was whether that was on the table for you to take assets, Julian. So, uh, <laughs> so it's easier to say you can pick up, and that was the option, remember, we were going for at Imperial, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So it was that available? And, and, and also, let's understand, NBK is a, is a big bank, and it's systemic. Um, is, is that the option you would go for uh, if you are the owner or you are in the financial services regulation point of view? I doubt, right? Um, is it, would that, that have been the best option for KCB if you look at it? Yes, but was that available and would that be what you go for? And that, I don't think that was available. Okay. KCB is a large bank and with the government in a with a stake in it. I saw the announcement yesterday 
and I wondered from your sense, how do you think this augurs for bank resolution in this country? How, how does it look? Because if KCB Group is telling us we took up NBK and we're at a point where we would like to offload it now entirely. I think it should be seen to be positive, right, um, Julian? And, and uh, you know, I, I don't think KCB gets credit enough on you know the support that it's delivered, say, for Chase Bank today. Yeah. She has, uh, you know, it closed. We ran it for two years and uh, supported the due diligence and the KPMG an eventual sell to, to, to SBM. Uh, we, we had a role in uh, supporting Imperial uh, with select assets much to the deposit. Um, we went into NBK in the last four years, and I'm glad you are seeing the results of cleaning up the book and, and reshaping it. Um, so I think we should, KCB should get the credit for that, um, you know, that role. Remember, we were heading towards a, a systemic issue by the time Chase Bank and Imperial closed and Dubai Islamic. Uh, and that's why it's good to have institutions like ACB that steps out and say, we will play a role to try and uh, mitigate risks that are industry-wide, country-wide. Um, I think uh, for all those names, uh, KCB has played a, a, a big role. You don't, in the eyes of everybody else, you don't get the reward because you are seen to be taking risk and the shareholders think otherwise. Uh, but if you are a big brother and you are who KCB is, you've got to put your best foot forward in some instances, not just for your own good, but for the nation's good. Uh, Paul, uh, before, before I came to broadcast, I was in transaction advisory and dealing with the kind of transactions now you're going through. Nine months to consummate this transaction. It's a pretty long time, in my view. Extremely. Why, why such a protracted period? I think you, you have to be realistic. Uh, the regulatory period is nine months, right? If you get an approval, you must close it out in nine months. So you have to set out the expectations correctly uh, to, to the market. Uh, behind the scene, we are working on a three month, and that's aggressive, right? Uh, but Julian's are one of uh, those people, and I hope in all the conversations we've had, is, is lay it out as it is. You go back and work hard and, and resolve that. So I'm going for three months with a team that uh, has worked on this for the last six months. Uh, but you must set the expectations correctly. Legal expectation is you get approval, you close it. Uh, uh, in, nine, in nine months. We closed TMB in six months. So yeah. it's doable. Yeah. yeah, and it's the same team uh, from the core management team uh, that uh, dealt with TMB, it's the same team that was dealing with, with this. Uh, so we are trying to say, can we do better than the six months uh, that we delivered to TMB? Early this year, the cabinet approved this conversation around the treasury single account. And what that would mean is that uh, government agencies, MDAs, would essentially be banking with one account. I thought to myself, perhaps KCB would have felt as well, barring the court case, NBK, given its government franchise, was significantly exposed to this. Is that a fair assessment? No. And um, I, I think at the end of the day, remember the TSA is not new. It's a 2016 uh, conversation. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, I'll be wading into my own views about TSA in this instance. Uh, government, uh, in my view, should have visibility on the liquidity positions of the different uh, state-owned enterprises, um, rather than keeping keeping the money. In my view, uh, the you've got to think about the liquidity consequences of, of some of those actions. So there is sufficient engagement that is ongoing, but that did not, did not play a role. And broadly speaking, do you see KCB Group exposed on that? We, we have to diversify. At the end of the day, uh, we do bank uh, lots. lots of them. So if you look at our 2024-2026 uh, strategy, um, it, it's about the diversification of that portfolio. The, 
the, the, the fact that we've hired a group treasurer should signal to you that, you know, we, we have to have different conversations about how we fund uh, across, across the group. And uh, KCB is uh, number one in those, in those, in those conversations. It, it, we, just, we just didn't wake up to, to, to appoint Anthony Mulisa for the sake of it, uh, Julian's. Uh, so we, whether there's TSA or not TSA, you'd, you'd have to have a plan on diversification of that funding. Uh, look at cost of funds. See, when liquidity constraints checked in, state-owned enterprises uh, deposits, uh, interest rates uh, on deposits went up to 16%. Yes. So it's not free. Yeah? Because I think uh, people, the price people see out there that you're sitting with free money at the, the banks that were paying and you will see as results come through almost 18, 19% on, on, on those deposits. Is that sustainable? Is that what you want to continue to do? Because you have to pass that cost to somebody, yeah. Yeah. right? You'll pass it either to the consumer directly or you'll pass it through to government. <laughs> so we, we've got to think uh, differently and, and, and the team is working on it. Could you give me a sense in terms of uh, what proportion of your deposit book is government franchise? It's around 35. Okay. Yeah, probably around 35. Paul, let's talk about uh, asset quality at the group level. I, I know you knew this was coming. <laughs> Four months ago, we sat here, my brother, and I asked you, uh, would 200 billion be a psychological mark for you? And you gave me the assurance that uh, we are not getting there. Even if you strip out NBK, by the way, it's just about 15% of the NPL book. Um, how do you feel about that? And how is your special assets recovery team doing? No, I, th I think, um, Julian, if you strip out... So there are two drivers on, 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 on our NPL, particularly for 2023. 20, we took a 56 billion downgrade. Yeah, sizable. Yeah? Uh, you, you've, got, you've got to make those tough calls uh, and lighten the organization going forward. Uh, then there is a 17 or so billion on FX impact, uh, which unless you are a magician to predict uh, on the exchange rate and the devaluation of the shilling. So I think if you strip out um, to, to ignore the 56 billion, which we took, because that, that we should have seen and we were seeing that was coming through. I think the value of the impact on the FX uh, on that quantum uh, is probably where I missed the mark on, on, on estimating that 200 billion. And you're right, I did, I did make that call. If you strip that out, even half of that will still be within my projection. Most interesting thing is you close your books, a shilling strengthens, <laughs> right? Yes. It's too late to take, it's too late, right? Because we'd be having a different conversation with yourself yes. here yes. today, right? For, for KCB numbers. Yeah. Um, and that's what one of the investors was asking me yesterday. So are you going to pay <laughs> dividend out of that upside <laughs> on the FX? <laughs> um, but it's, it's, it's the reality of running uh, an entity like this. Um, and you recall that I said, we'll focus on the stock. And you've seen we've not been focusing in our reporting more on the percent, but yes, focusing on the stock. In all engagements that I've had with investors uh, as late as recently in Dubai, is we will make detailed presentation, and I hope Julian's will see the presentation that we put in yesterday, has a lot more detail than what you've seen in the yeah. past. Um, so back to your question, missed the mark, largely FX. Could I have moved the reporting period to 31st January? <laughs> <laughs> Worked to your favor. It would have worked to my favor. It is what it is to be in this role. I looked at KCB Kenya, Paul, and I wondered whether KCB Kenya should have been a, as aggressive in lending as it was in F23. The loan book is up 
And because you must finance the, the lending either way, if you look at your deposits, the interest expense on deposits doubled. And I wondered whether you have a target loan to deposit ratio because 2023 vis-a-vis -vis 2022, it fell to below 70%. And I thought maybe Anastasia and her team were really hard pressed to meet that threshold. And that's why lending kept on going. But you see, if you look at the trade-off with the interest expense, it really squeezed your margins. You're right, and uh, you have to make choices. Um, what you probably don't see and numbers don't tell you is the instances that we slowed lending yeah. in the year. Uh, Especially the latter quarter. We did, um, yeah. we did. Uh, so it never tells you the whole story of how management makes that judgment. Uh, and and that's, that's why you have to make the call on how you fund, uh, you fund that growth, uh, isn't it? Uh, uh, Julians. So do, did we see pressure around that, particularly with the liquidity pressure in the country? Absolutely, yes. Um, but we have an alcohol that meets uh, every single time to make calls and in those decisions. And, and, and I'm confident that the team will continue to make that evaluation. Um, good news is, uh, you know, performance of the cred book. Um, the last three, four years is amazing. Um, so we'll make choices. It's, 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 what, what does that slowing down mean for you in future? So it's about what speed uh, and calibration. And I can just only assure you that that, that that discussion does happen. We do apply breaks when we need to. The most interesting thing Julian's and I don't know, you're an expert in this, is, you know, uh, monetary policy adjustments meant to try and transmit and slow down private sector <laughs> credit, but then it goes the other way around, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's a very... It's a very interesting time that we are in. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, look, uh, private sector credit grew 13.9%. First time it's double digit. Yeah. When you thought it would go there. Yes. Yeah. I'll leave it to the economists like yourself <laughs> to be able to, to guide us. So now, uh, clapping together the discussion around your lending and your NPL. When you look at your buckets around, especially stage two and stage three loans, how is the flow looking like from stage two to stage three? Because I'd imagine any investor looking at KCB now would be keen on that flow. I think we've, um, we've, we've, been, we've been very good at managing migration, right? Uh, if, if you see, and this latest presentation we made, you can see we've split down those numbers to just be able actually to answer that that there is, is no significant flow that is out of uh, expectation uh, into, into, into that. But like any other bank, you'll have your early alerts that you must monitor daily. Uh, and uh, I tell you, even at board level, <laughs> that, that is managed and actively managed. And we've done a very good job in the last, let uh, uh, me say, two years, three years in, in terms of uh, managing that. The special assets team, and uh, you, know, you had asked me that question. Um, you know, when you are writing down those values, you don't see the recoveries, yeah. right? But actually, the team is doing a very good job. You've seen that 14 billion of upgrades, if I'm not wrong, in terms of the numbers. That's, that's work being done by, 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 by that team. We've also set up a team to just deal on write-offs. Um, a recovery from right of separate from 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 the special assets team. Uh, I think from 2024, and I'm sure you'll ask me next time we speak about it, you will you will see the true value of the work of those teams, because you don't have significant write downs in what we did in 2023, because um, we had to split that data and show it so that. There's evidence that the team is working. <laughs> Otherwise, if you just um, you know lump the numbers, then you don't you don't you don't see the value. Yeah. 
the special team focusing on uh, recoveries on write-offs, is there a target they are chasing? 10 billion. 10 billion. Wow. TMB was a shining light. How is it going there? I, I think uh, I, was, I was there two weeks ago. I told them there is an uh, opportunity to double that number. Uh, in what horizon? I think um, in two years. In two years. Certainly within our 2024-2026 strategy, for sure. Um, but I, I, I say what I said again yesterday. You have to drive sustainability. Uh, you know, really, we, 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 didn't, we didn't do any magic other than on TMB, other than just oversighting. We haven't been touched in. Uh, it's, it's now that we are putting in, um, you know, an enhanced board yeah. in place, um, right? Uh, we are into year two of that transaction, so we have to think about what, what does it look post the two years that... Uh, that 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 we agreed to with the with the with the minority shareholders and now that will shape up. We are putting, as I said, we're putting them under T24 terminals, uh, T24, which brings well, it brings them into the same co-banking uh, platform with KCB. But it gives us two opportunities. One is uh, how you optimize your backend. Uh, nothing stops us today from running the uh, entire back end from, from any of our markets where we've invested. Uh, but most importantly, it gives us the opportunity to deploy digital financial services capabilities. And that's virgin territory on that side. And that, that for me is what I see as, 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 as the opportunity. We are not waiting for that to go live. There is already conversation active about... Um, partnerships for, for, that, for that deployment. Uh, so I'm not just talking about growth from where we can see where, where we are going to, to optimize. I, I, I spent three days with the teams in, in DRC and uh, you know, putting, putting them on the performance management system of KCB is happening this year. We, have, we didn't do that before. Um, so those, 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 those elements, uh, Julian's, will bring, will bring TMB into, into play. But again, I think, people like yourselves who are doubting whether we made the right decision, um, <laughs> I hope you can see. Because on a year like 2023, if it wasn't for the performance of regional businesses, yeah, yeah, yeah. Julian's, I am not here to sugarcoat. If it wasn't the regional businesses that showed up, yes. uh, we'd be having a different conversation with yourself. But take a step back and see the cleanup we did from 2019 on the regional businesses. Yeah. They didn't just get to what they got. Every single effort, whether governance, leadership, products, tech capabilities, deployment from 2019, is what is giving that result today. It's, it's almost the same that we're trying to do on Kenya. I bet it's big when you start taking. You wouldn't have felt the heat in those subs because Kenya was firing and therefore was cushioning on those changes. But I, 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 I said to the staff and the teams in Kenya, 2023 is you realize why diversification and presence in those markets is important for an entity like KCB Group. Now, for the optimist, they will say, if you have that momentum and you fix the Kenya, what is the outlook? Yes. And uh, given the performance we are seeing coming from TMB, I'd imagine you're already quoting the minority investors. The 24 months window period is almost out for the entire uptake. I would, I, I would always prefer that if I can have uh, somebody who knows the market you share risks with, that will still be my preference. It's a decision of the board, but that would be my preference. <laughs> yeah. The first TMB conversation Paul, you and I had was around, uh, my view was uh, that market and that bank in particular is particularly concentrated on non-funded income. And you actually said, 
that we could actually get lessons from them on how to drive our non-funded income. So two questions there. One is that are you rejigging that to get a more balanced view between funded and non-funded income? And two, what lessons are you bringing from there into Kenya? So let's say uh, from, 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 from TMB, first lesson is to make sure that you have a group treasurer. And, and I, it sounds basic. <laughs> But uh, you realize that you have opportunities to optimize across the group. Yeah? Um, so so it's, it's how efficient you are to serve volumes. And, 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 and these guys have built that capability. In, in a country like that, they, they, they are able to pay all the civil service efficiently. Right? Uh, it's not, you know, you've been there, you know the country, yes. but they're able to execute that capability. But they're also generally able to make decisions a lot faster. <laughs> uh, the, the investments that we are going to make on digital services should help them a lot, a lot more. For lessons for Kenya, and I said it yesterday, Julians, and there is from a human capital capability and investment capability, it's 100% in KCB. Speed of execution has to improve. Uh, you can't get a better banker, sorry, but they are there. We, when we reopened Chase, we had 141 staff from KCB. Wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for that capability. So you have the, 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 the capability. There is no investment on in technology. We've gone to the group board to ask for investment, and we didn't get. But it's one thing to have capability on you, and one to have investments on technology. How fast you get that into, out into the market. The, the third point is um, how do we scale across the group? So you probably would have read, you know, we've replicated the product uh, here in Uganda with MTN. You can see how that is reshaping KCB Uganda, right? At the end of the day, if you create that focus and try and transfer those, those capabilities, Julian, across the group, then you'll create a multiplier effect for yourself. Uh, I think, again, the legal limitations on how you can deploy that cash. Yes, they are rich with cash, but we have experts. And uh, the, the, the core reason why we, we, we had to create that group treasurer role is because all treasurers in countries fight for their own performance, right? <laughs> and it's normal. But you need somebody who then says, how do we deliver value for, 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 for the group? Paul, three times we have sat now and you've spoken very bullishly about this issue of uh, group treasury function. I have a question for you. Could you give us some color around the largest cross-subsidiary syndication you have done as a group? Well, it must be the GLC in DRC, right? Uh, I just need to get the number of it. But it, it is the, the cement company uh, between TMB and KCB Kenya. Okay. And that's just the reason. So, I see. Um, th that should be the largest of the syndications. Uh, but uh, Julian's and uh, you haven't asked this, but let's see. It's, it's good to syndicate. And that's actually the opportunity for growth for KCB Kenya. Yeah. But we have to be selective. Part of the, that NPL includes syndicated numbers on the bigger tickets, particularly with Tanzania. Yeah. Right? So we are not going to repeat those errors. Uh, one, w behind the scene, the other thing that we've done, uh, Julian, as part of addressing, you know, collections and recoveries are other things, as part of addressing the, the credit issue, is we took the mandate of lending up to the single borrower limit for countries, yeah. back to countries. In the past, they were only getting to half. And that next decision is made in Kenya. So now it's back to the countries. It's been a year and a half of operating in Kenya. 
Because in the end, you have to hold the business accountable. If they believe they can transfer risk to somebody else and decision to somebody else, then you have skunks, for lack of a better word. And uh, so, so, so the improvement in subs is, is, is as a result of many decisions that we made to make sure the countries are. The other bit, uh, Julian's, if I went into this is, if you look back, you used to have a chairman of Tanzania being a Kenyan, CEO, a Kenyan, finance director, Kenyan man. It doesn't work. Yeah. Right? Credit, you can apply all your Campari, but a person that is present in that market knows a little bit more about those borrowers yeah. than what you read. Isn't it? Yes. yes. Yeah? So you've got to be able to, 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 to give that mandate to, to, to the region. So when I spoke earlier on about governance and leadership, those are the things that we've changed. To make sure that that decisioning and the call. Um, KCB also has a unique uh, model on governance. Every subsidiary has a group board member and a group executive. Right? Because, yes, you devolve that decision, but there is a group board member and a group executive responsible in there. Yeah. And there is sufficient oversight. Um, so, so we will syndicate. We'll try and uh, take uh, any big tickets. But I'm, I've told you before, I'm a fan of lower tickets, high volume, good call. Okay. Better pricing. Yes. How, how is your cross-subsidiary syndication pipeline looking, look, looking like for 2024? It's, it's the number one opportunity for growth, for KCB Kenya. But typical kind of those borrowings, right? And let me now temper the expectations. Typical of those borrowings are their FCY. Yeah. Foreign currency. We've got to have to say any FCY lending must be backed by FCY cash flows. That would be a tough sell, Paul. It's a hard one. That, that would be a tough sell. have to really, really demonstrate, right? Because I mean, they are customers. You really have to have the whole entire ecosystem, right, for, for, for value chain, right, for you to, 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 to take some of those risks. Uh, if anything goes, which is exactly why we, we, are, we were taking the heat of uh, the FX, yeah. isn't it? You, you've, got to, you've, got to, you've got to take lessons. You have to take lessons. We are, I'm not saying it will be zero, right? But it has to be a different conversation. Uh, it's not business as usual for, 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 for that. Um, customers that are really um, invested in KCB, absolutely. Uh, but if you are only going to have, um, and I'll say publicly, just borrow from KCB and transfer that FX risk, you're going to have a difficult call for. We have had the conversation about recapitalizing KCB Kenya, uh, now we don't have to talk about NBK. Uh, yesterday from the presentation, I saw this funding in the pipeline. Uh, how soon do you deploy this? Um, you know, all approvals were received in this circle of board, 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 board meetings. Um, so we should be able to you know, see how we can fast track the drawdown. But all approvals are in place. Um, part of the decision not to pay the dividends is to just fund the growth of KCB Kenya. Um, I, th I think, uh, you know, I get, again, from January, February performance, today is 21st, you'll see performance. Uh, I'm, I'm not more worried about KCB Kenya. Okay. And, and now that you've mentioned the dividend poll, KCB is one of the players in this market who, even in spite of COVID, paid a dividend. I know in our past conversation you have said we shouldn't have made that decision. Yesterday was a shocker for many. And the expectation is that this morning the market will punish you a good one. Just walk us through arriving at that position. I mean, um, you've, you've, you've just asked me about the capital position for KCBK. <laughs> so who will pay the dividend? Yeah. Right? You, you strain KCBK's capital 
to pay dividends. Where, which is the other option you're going to go? Rights issue? Julian? You have a sale which you need to consume it, though. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 uh, that's six months, right? Um, so it's as well as um, if, if our projections are right, and, and not our projections are right um, on the performance of 2024, might as well push to pay, uh, you know, work hard to pay interim dividends and creating a problem for yourself, isn't it? So my race is to get back to that uh, best from half year, worst case scenario from, from September. Um, I, th I, I am betting, and uh, this is now the different, different position. You, you believe market will beat, will, will beat us thoroughly. I think it's the other way around. Market will give us a benefit of doubt for making tough decisions. Especially on NBK. As well as even not paying dividends for the investors. No, but Paul, it was a mixed picture yesterday. If you look at uh, your share price was up 9%, uh, but if you look at the net outflows from foreign investors, it was 31 million five days straight. It tells you something about the dividend. It, it, again, I think at the end of the day, you, you, you've got to run a sustainable organization. Trillions uh, have got to make a call. What I like about, uh, and this might sound simplistic, is uh, there's no suspense account when you sell a share. Somebody's buying. Yeah. I need to create value for the person that is buying. buying yeah. yeah? Uh, and, and hopefully that person who is buying sees, sees, sees the future. Yes. Right? That, that for me is the commitment I'm making. How are your numbers on uh, G2G exposure looking like? The last time we sat here with you, I was telling you the exposure looks a bit outsized. How is it now? And there's been talk about dialing it down. Um, what would that mean for you? Uh, uh, Julian, uh, I, I thought you'll give, you'll give me credit for, for, for that for, move. For that move. <laughs> <laughs> And if everybody crucified me and KCB went, went into, into, into that. Um, we started, we paid, we made repayments, right? Uh, we didn't, no, there was no shock in the market. And I must thank the trade and, and treasury team for, 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 for that hard work. The, uh, at, at that point, we were the only bank. Now there are 10 banks in, into it and more coming in. Um, and, and, and in the end, you know, happy to, to shed off a bit of, of that um, while still depend. You know, remember before before the OTS were 42 percent of market share of. So so just play it correctly. Um, we showed up for the nation. Uh, yeah. yeah. At the time of great strength. Yes, and um, we pulled successfully. Uh, when, when I thought everybody, uh, you know, threw all mad at us. Um, I think my personal consideration is there cannot be a switch on, a switch off, switch on change. Um, so, so it will be interesting and we will play our role to see how that transition happens when it happens. But it's a trade product that would, would definitely be in as we were before. It was a key factor in the trade finance numbers we saw, I think. Yes. OK. Uh, when we started this conversation, you mentioned um, the twin factor between KCB Kenya and NBK. You love one more. I always look at KCB and Pesa and Fuliza, and I get the same feeling. How do those two sit in your mind? Uh, it, you know, it's, it's, it's about uh, we have a very strong partnership. Uh, you know, both products have a partnership model, right? Uh, I think at the end of the day, if you want to get uh, your higher numbers, it would come from the Mpesa, right? KCB Mpesa. Uh, it's 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 a friction that I'm okay to manage. <laughs>